Hi everybody, it's Jack. Um, I got an interesting project I've been working on for the past year, off and on. Um, this is a realistic anamorphic lens inside of Blender. Um, this uses the actual optics kind of science behind the glass to um, simulate on the Blender camera the effects of an anamorphic lens. So when you open up the, the Jackamorph camera, uh, you'll get a little uh, information here in the text box. It's important you read this because there are limitations on how this will actually work. So I hope you guys take a second to read that. Um, but just diving right in, if you're familiar with anamorphic lenses, um, they have interesting characteristics that are hard to render, such as uh, different uh, orientations of the bokeh, depending on if you're behind the subject or in front of the subject. So you can see here we're focused on the blue uh, Suzanne model and the items in front of it are distorted more in a vertical direction. Um, objects behind it are distorted a little more uh, horizontally. Uh, looking at the, the straight bar models in the background too, you can see you start to get the barrel distortion on the sides as it warps. Uh, this is all dependent on your camera's aperture. Uh, <clears throat> the way I made this was modeled after a Micro Four Thirds camera uh, with a 50 millimeter lens in front um, the anamorphic elements in front of those, or uh, in front of the 50 millimeter lens, and uh, about an f-stop of 1.8. But I, I worked on this to bring it down about f f1. Um, <clears throat> that, that said, there are still limitations, especially on how close you can focus. So anything past a meter is what I kind of calibrated things to. Um, and so all you have to do, let's. Uh, Let's get rid of this window here. This is a pre-render. So you can see our setup here. We have our camera on the left, and then um, we have uh, a couple monkey models at different distances, and then the bars on the sides. So if you see this giant empty object here, focus controller move me. This is what we use to control the focus. So I'm going to keep this in the side view so I can show off how that works. We'll snap into a rendered view and with a 4 by 3 aspect ratio of the sensor you might this, think this looks kind of weird. Um, it does and that's when you when you shoot anamorphic on a normal camera that's that's how it looks. Uh, so so currently let me zoom in a little bit more here and I'm gonna start to move the focus in and out just in the Y direction here. So we're focused on the blue blue monkey. Let's go to the green one you can see the focus breathing occurs very naturally because of the elements. And when I say elements, I mean optical elements. So we're snapped on the green, moving out to the blue, you can see it breathe, out to the red, and then all the way back out to the white. Uh, maximum distance I calibrated this all for was about 170 meters. Um, so if you purchase this kit, you'll get just this exact setup, you can you can move the um, or append the Jackamorph camera uh, collection into any setup that you have um, or any scene that you've already created and use this instead. Just keep in mind, let's keep the focus there. Um, just keep in mind when you when you snap back to uh, the Blender viewport, you don't have the the element squeeze going on, so it'll look different than. If you're just looking around in this viewport here, turn on rendering, that's what we want to see. So, let's go ahead and render an image. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to snap to this. And let this load up. What I've done on the render tab is under the view um, tab on the, on the display options, this is how it'll come out rendered, just like we saw in the viewport. But with anamorphic lenses, you want to squeeze them in post. So let's pop that back to about two, and that looks more like the actual model. Um, anamorphic lenses, too, are a little different in terms of their squeeze ratio. Sometimes vary based on the distance that you have them focused out. So that's kind of a cool element to play with, too. So you can get you can adjust this to see where about where your aspect ratio lies to get it perfect. And a good way to do this is to just render a sphere 
at different distances and then play um, at different aspect ratios to see where where to get it a perfect circle on screen. So let's go back to the viewport and I'll show you that everything is tied or parented to the, key, the main camera here. So here we go, we're moving around, everything is moving with us and we're still focused on that monkey in the background no matter where I move to. And you'll see some vignetting uh, from the camera box, that, that's adjustable and you'll definitely see when you move because things are, things are catching up in Blender. So moving through, moving through, still focused on the white monkey. Let's put the camera here and then the nice thing about having this focus empty is that you can animate it along with the camera when you animate the camera. So you can snap to different objects or you know, do a, do a focus pull, um, tailor the smoothness, and I'll try to get really close. You'll start to see that as I get very close, the focus falls off. Um, like I said, that's normal for limitations of optical setups like this. So, uh, yeah, it's, it looks very pretty, and I'll have to throw some regular test renders up. Uh, keep in mind when you render out. You're not going to have a lot of other information such as uh, depth information and, and things that line up with your image because you're shooting through, you're physically shooting through glass in this. So you're, if you were to render out those layers, you would just see the back of glass. Um, so what, what we're mostly seeing here is the transmission indirect pass that's, that's coming through and it's fine by me as long as it looks pretty. So feel free to move the camera around anywhere you want. Feel free to go into the camera settings on the right side. Um, sorry, it's currently blocked by my face here. Um, but you can play with the f-stop, the number of blades, and the uh, focus distance is actually uh, under a driver. But feel free to play with the focal length as well. I would say a minimum about 50. You start to see the, the effects of the... Uh, vignetting here, so I would say keep it 50 millimeters at minimum. Whoops, and uh, sensor size is currently set to micro four thirds. You can play with that too, just see what you get out of it. Um, let me know what you guys think. I hope to work on a version 2 for other focal lengths um, this year, but this is just a kickoff and I'm really excited that this is working. So let me know if you guys like it and post your things that you make with it. Okay, bye.